Hey everyone, today I'm here with a video to go over what's new with update 1.05 in the Twilight Wars browser app. So the main updates features is five new action cards, some of which are codex, and we'll be demoing those shortly as soon as we finish going over um, this preview here. So the updates, the updated cards that will be included in new games are emergency repairs, fighter conscription, impersonation, signal jamming, and veto. We also <clears throat> have some new features that are going to make the user experience a lot smoother, I think. The first of which is that we've added resources and influence totals into the player info tab. And you'll see what I mean by that shortly. <coughs> we also have added in technology totals into the player info tab. For one of the preset maps, we've swapped a uh, system out for another one. And that was just to adjust for balancing of the technology skips. We've also included um, a couple of bug fixes. I'll just talk about one here, which is we fixed an issue during live play where sometimes uh, units were mistakenly being removed from reinforcements. Um, if you play by correspondence mostly, you would never have seen this bug, but if you've ever played live, you might have had to refresh your browser um, in order to remedy this. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into a game here and demo some of the things that I just talked about. So first, if we head on over to the player info tab, let's go down to our tab, Atlas, and you'll notice a couple of things. <clears throat> first of all, we have the technology cards counters. So previously before this update, if you, let's say you had the objective where you need to have, um, you know, two unit technologies, or maybe in the later stages of the game, two, um, two technologies in each of the four colors. <clears throat> well, you know, this could have been, and from my own experience, I know this is tedious to do because you have to hover over them and then, you know, bookkeep in some way, whether you're writing them down or keeping track of them mentally. And this could be annoying, especially if you're in the middle of a round and you want to ensure that, you know, okay, you've done this, right? You don't have to worry about it. You're going to be able to score these objectives later on. Well, now you have a nice reassured way of doing this. <clears throat> and that's just by looking at your counter, right? So I have two um, biotic, I have one cybernetic, etc. And the white stands for the unit upgrade. So that's pretty nice. And then perhaps even more uh, useful for the user is the resource and influence um, totals here. Because this could be really tedious to count up on your own. And that includes having to account for these agendas, right? So let's just see, like to verify, for example. Well, in our resources, we have 10 of 13. Right, so we have zero, three, six, plus two from core mining is eight, another 10. Mir has terraforming, so that's 11, plus the two from Quan is 13. And then Quan and Mir are both exhausted. So that indeed reflects our accurate total. And the same for the, the influence there. This is particularly nice for a bunch of reasons. The first one that comes to mind is, you know, the building units. You just can see I got 10 resources available. And of course, the app automatically will consider Sarwin tools. So this just adds to the automation of the bookkeeping. Um, I think it's a nice uh, improvement here. That way, you know, you don't have to keep reminding yourself or even just updating in a notes tab, for example, of 
you know, the available pool of resources and influence you might have. So I hope that's going to make life easier going forward. So that's what's new in the player info tab. Let's go ahead and look at the five new action cards, which I have lined up here. So the first one I want to go over is impersonation, which I believe is a codex one. Um, well, actually, I'm trying to think if it's is it codex. It might be. I'll have to remind myself later. But uh, this is a component action, so we can play it right now during the perform an action step. And what we do with impersonation is we would spend three influence to draw one secret objective. So as with all action cards, to play them, you double click. So if we double click impersonation, we'll be asked if we want to play the card and that will be us to confirm our choices. Now we haven't actually made any choices yet. So when we click yes, we actually are brought to this selection screen here. So spending influence in particular, we can do that through the use of trade goods um, or the use of planets. So trade goods are done through this increment decrement here and planets can actually be toggled for usage. And then if we don't meet the requirements, let's just say we exhaust um, um, Maluk, but don't spend anything else. That's only two influence. So if we submit, then it's not enough here. But if we do do enough, say one trade good with two influence from Maluk, and we submit, then we get this confirmation here. And if we do proceed to confirm, we'll draw the one secret objective once everyone passes on sabotaging. And then, well, if we have three secret objectives, we'll have to discard one because then we'll be up to four. But I won't go over that. But I just want to go over the, the new UI there for a card like impersonation. Um, next, we have signal jamming. So with signal jamming, we choose a, a one non-home system that contains or is adjacent to one of our ships. And then what we do is we place a command token from another player's reinforcements in that system. So right now we have no system selected. So if we were to try to use signal jamming, we'll be told we have to select a system. Now, if we try to select a home system, the Emirates of Akan home system, for example, and then we try to select the barony of Letnev, we'll be told that this system here is a home system. So we can't do that. And also if we try to select a system that's not adjacent or doesn't include our ships, and we try to do this. So for example, we select the Welland system. Again, that's not a valid selection. So, um, that's signal jamming. Now, one thing to note is if a player doesn't have any command tokens in their reinforcements, for example, if we selected Charlie, the game, if the action card resolved, the game would actually go into a sub-step where Charlie would be prompted to choose which token from which pool he would want to do in place of the reinforcement. Okay. I'm going to do emergency repairs. So first I want to do fighter conscription. Fighter conscription is pretty straightforward. So what we do with fighter conscription, component action, is just going to place one fighter from our reinforcements in each system that has at least one of our space docks. But we have to have the available capacity. So looking at the board, we have a space dock here with no fighters, a space dock here with no fighters. So let's go ahead and resolve fighter conscription and see that get updated. So we'll do that. Confirm. Now.
now we have to wait for um, the other players to pass, which we'll do shortly. Okay, the game comes back to us, and you can see now we have one fighter here and one here. So that's good. So I'm just going to roll back the game now to before we use that card. And I'll just go ahead and refresh here. Okay. So the last thing I want to demo, um, I'm not going to do veto. Pretty straightforward. Works like quash. I'm going to go over emergency repairs. So this occurs at the start or end of a combat round. We can repair all of our units that have sustained damage. Um, look here, we have three dreadnoughts that have sustained damage. So let's go ahead and invade this system. That way we can use the uh, emergency repairs card. So I'll activate the beta wormhole and we're going to have to go ahead and pass on the ability round here, as well as um, because we've activated someone else's system, the other players are required to pass. Okay, so we'll move our dreadnoughts into the system. Firm. All right, so now we can resolve an ability at the start of combat. And I believe we should be able to use emergency repairs here because this is technically the start of a combat round. So we'll select it, we'll use it, but won't resolve until the other players pass, aka don't cancel the card. So both players have passed. It comes back to us now. If we pay attention to the system here, our dreadnoughts currently are tilted, have sustained damage. Once we pass on this ability round, our card will go through. And now we can see that our dreadnoughts um, have repaired themselves and it's ready for an even combat there. And that's an emergency repair card is gone. It's been used. And that's that. Okay, so um, that boat does it for the action cards. And with that, I believe that does it for everything I want to go over for update 1.05. Um, as usual, the cards that are in the update won't be available to games that have already been started. So as of when the update goes live, um, new games will get these cards, but every game will get the new technology updates or yeah, technology and planet card updates for the, the shortcut totals. So that'll be nice for everyone to have. Um, and the bugs, all the bugs will be resolved for all games. I'm going to cut the video here. Thanks for watching and hope you enjoy this uh, latest update. So we'll see you in the next video.